What up? It's your boy Tiba her reaction. Today's Wrestling Wednesday, and this is my kind of video coming from of uh, coming from well known wrestling channel video Wrestle with Andy. This is what I loved. What I love about wrestling, my 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 side of wrestling. The baby faces, aka the good guys. You know what I'm saying? This is good guys wrestling's best face turns. Mm, you know I love a good face turn. Right? I mean, it's you know as much as folks sometimes love a heel turn. Not sure why, but I always love a good face turn, man. I love it seeing the such as when the first a wrestler I wants to I want to cheer for, but I can't because I don't root for the bad guy. So it's not good. I love it. Most recently we had Carmelo Hayes with a double turn with Braun Breaker. We had uh, Seth Rollins not too long ago as well too. Sl I'm really thinking Tony D'Angelo is turning face. Tony D'Angelo and Stax is turning face too because that little that little exchange recently has been a little little questionable. Thinking they going to they they're going to the face side as well too. Let me see who else recently turned face. Um. Um, let's we'll see. Uh, Bobby Lashley's back. Oh yeah, Santos. And um, you know, I'm hoping they don't just because they turn face. They keep they keep having to lose over there. And of course, most recently, Sami Zayn, man. But other than that, let's check out next how good guys wrestling best face turn from wrestling with Andy. Let's get it. One of the yes, most sir. This moment here, yes. Like the shot of the Quam tribal queen. It's an industry built upon creating heroes who fans will want to get behind. Yes. That said, doing this is a delicate process and one which must be carried out carefully. Mm -hmm. And that's because, on more than one occasion, a potentially game-changing shift in alignment has gone wrong as a result of poor booking. But what happens when it's done to perfection? Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking yes. at today. So join us as we take a deep dive into Good Guys Wrestling's greatest face turns. Even Brock, you know, he went back to his old ways. And as always, if we're going to start anywhere, we really yes. should do so with one of the yes. best examples of this in action. Yes. Because not only did WrestleMania 13. Always said, this is one of the best things they could have done right here. It's made this man a good. Well, I gotta be careful with this because a lot of folks like to like to say say that call a certain wrestler a good guy is a bad taste in their mouth and they and it's first to he's winding up but he was indeed an anti hero baby face for sure and this is awesome. The crowd was starting to, to slowly get behind him. Some of us like myself wanted a roof room, but he was still a bad guy. But when that double tour happened, freedom. And he had one of the best finisher at the time too, the stunner. So when this happened, I was so happy. And his entrance music course was awesome. So yes. Best one right here, yes. Team marked the official babyface turn of a new top star, mm -hmm. but it also ended up changing the course of wrestling history it did. forever. Yes, while the rest of the card that night was largely forgettable, there was one match which saved the day that evening in Rosemont, Illinois, and it was Stone. Cold. Why they say thirteen was a bad WrestleMania? I guess I guess y'all got a comment down below on that one. Steve Austin versus Bret Hart. Now, we could do a whole video breaking down the bout beat for beat and explaining why it's probably the greatest of all time. But for the sake of brevity, all you need to know is that heading into it, Austin was the biggest heel in the company mm -hmm. and Hart was the biggest baby yep. face. That said, there was a vocal section of the crowd who were getting behind the rattlesnake more and more each week on account of his rebellious antics. And feeling frustrated over this, the hitman had decided to expose his rival as a mm -hmm. fraud by forcing him to submit in the middle of the ring. On the night in question, though, like a true hero, Austin simply refused to give mm -hmm. up no matter what punishment was thrown his way. Yep. And this extended to him being locked in a sharpshooter towards the close of the bout, mm -hmm. all while he was gushing blood from his yep. forehead. So unable to escape at this point, he chose to pass out rather than tap, meaning he'd technically lose the match, but would always be able to say he never lost the war. Mm -hmm. And this only served to infuriate Hart even more so. After the match was done, he'd continue to wail on his mm -hmm. opponent, with this turning him heel and completing the double switch. Yep. But while Brett's heel turn would yield a lot of positive results over the year which followed, it was mm. nothing compared to the historical yes. significance of Austin switching to the babyface side of the roster. Mm -hmm. And that's because by the time WrestleMania 14 came around a year yep. later, the rattlesnake would be so white hot, he
rocky drag wrestling into the mainstream as he yes, kicked the attitude era yes he did yes, with a single decision wwf had effectively rescued their company from the brink of bankruptcy and taken themselves to greater heights than yes, ever indeed. before because make no mistake if stone cold continues to be a heel heading into 1998 none of this happens mm -hmm. and if you want any evidence of that you only have to look at what occurred when he actually did turn heel yep. again in 2001 and the boom period came to a crashing end mm -hmm. since that point in fact wrestling has remained in somewhat of a niche role with nothing in the modern day truly being able to reach the heights of steve austin again but even if that's the way it stays now it's not to say there haven't been big baby faces who've arisen over the decades and in the years following the Attitude Era, few of those stars mm, were bigger than Batista. Yes. That's right. Outside of John Cena and maybe Randy Orton, no one really personified the Ruthless Aggression Era more than the animal. Mm -hmm. But he might never have gotten to that point had it not been for a perfect babyface turn, which took place when he gave Evolution the thumbs down mm -hmm. in 2005. Mm -hmm. How did this happen? Well, despite being the most dominant stable of their era, Evolution were starting to fall apart by the middle of 2004. And that was because, with Triple H, Ric Flair, and Batista growing jealous of Randy Orton's success, they decided to give him the boot. But while this booking decision had initially been made in order to get the legend killer over as the next face of the company, something surprising happened between that year's SummerSlam and mm -hmm. WrestleMania 21. And this was the animal getting over huge. So recognizing the situation and changing plans then, Vince McMahon instead decided to do a slow burn tease of Big Dave leaving Evolution himself, with this really getting going once he won the Royal Rumble mm -hmm. in January of 2005. And since the game was the World Heavyweight Champion mm -hmm. at that point, it Going started to cause tarot. friction between the duo. Friction which saw the champ make plans to get his protege moved over to SmackDown by challenging their World Champion JBL instead. Mm -hmm. That said, Batista was too smart to fall for this trick. And so, realizing his leader was no longer behind him, he turned on him before mm -hmm. the opposite could occur, when on the February 21st episode of Raw that year, he gave him a thumbs down worthy of a Roman Emperor, mm -hmm. then proceeded to powerbomb him through a table. Of course, it should go without saying that this got a massive pop from the audience mm -hmm. who'd been waiting yes, for such indeed. a moment to come for months. And while the animal then went on to beat the game at WrestleMania 21, it solidified the whole thing yes, as being sir. legendary. But that's not the only time someone in WWE has turned babyface by leaving an abusive stable. No, only this year. Yeah! The angles wrestling has seen in decades happen when Sami Zayn left the bloodline. What made this one so perfect? This right here will make the bloodline storyline more interested in bringing the face fans like myself. Wow. If that whole thing was so one-sided in a way it's like there's no room for a face fan to get into it but when sammy did it it helped kevin owens in it, in it. now we got cody rose in it and riddle back in with it you gotta love it now now the bloodline story is not one side it's sided for the fate the hill the who rolls with the 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 bitch line while the faces roll with the guys who are against the, the bitch line such as sammy ko and riddle and oh and cody rose and many others well too but yes and hopefully see Jay, either Jay or Solo break away from it though. Or it could be surprisingly Jimmy. Who knows? And finally see the crumbling of the Tribal Queen. But let's keep going. Perfect. Well, it was partially because it had been so long since something this good happened in Vince McMahon's mm -hmm. promotion. Fans of the company had almost forgotten what it felt like. It did. It all started the prior year when, after gradually working his way into a position of honorary oos of the heel stable, Zayn won over the hearts of fans everywhere. And that was because, with him being so childlike in his naivety and desire to please his tribal chief, it became nigh on impossible for anyone to boo him. Hell, even his biggest detractor, Jay Uso, eventually came to love him. But as the weeks and months went on and Roman Reigns started asking more and more of his mm -hmm. underling, you could see Sammy growing increasingly uncomfortable. Sure, he was loyal to the cause and felt like he had to continually prove this. That said, one line he wasn't as willing to cross was hurting his real life mm -hmm. best friend, Kevin Owens. And all this reached ahead at the 2023 Royal Rumble, mm -hmm. as there, being asked to lay out a defenseless KO, the Quebec native decided he couldn't follow this path anymore. And instead, nailed Reigns yes. with a chair Woo! Back, Loved it. to one of the most guttural yes. pops in years. Oh man, just go back to that moment. I just want to see, just want to see the little, that little. Hold on, go back. Nailed Reigns with a chair shot to the back, all to one of. Ha <laughs> Yes. Loved the it. Most Loved pop it right there. 
the, the little tribal bitch door on the, down the ground. Yes, love it so much. I would scream my heart on this one. In years. Yes, it was perfect and easily the best face turn in WWE since Daniel Bryan's mm -hmm. almost a decade prior. And sure, you could argue over Still whether or not man. what came next at Elimination Chamber was the right decision. But even if you feel the company dropped the ball there, it's impossible to deny that for one night at the Royal Rumble, everything came together yeah, to create kind of the ball an me great somewhat. Moment. That said, even this isn't the only example of someone leaving a heel stable behind and having a legendary face turn in the process. No, way back in 2002, mm. only months after returning to WWE, Hulk Hogan was doing the same thing when he dropped the NWO and went back to the red and yellow. Mm -hmm. But this he was never to. meant to happen though. No, after signing up Hogan, Scott Hall, and Kevin Nash in February of that year, Vince McMahon's plan had been to redo the New World Order angle and have them run roughshod over the company as a heel trio. Once WrestleMania 18 took place, however, plans changed, as there, despite being in the ring with The Rock, the fog of nostalgia saw the majority of fans mm -hmm. turn on the Great One in favor of the Hulkster during the two's legendary showdowns. So calling an audible, once the match was over, the boss sent Hall and Nash to the ring with instructions to turn on Hogan. Mm. And in doing so, it meant The Rock would come to his aid and officially inaugurate the five-time WWF champion. I think they also they didn't want, right, they didn't want the Rock fans to turn Rock fully. Back over to the side of the good guys. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the end of the whole thing because the next night on Raw, now a babyface once more, the Hulkster came out to the ring and received a 10-minute long standing he ovation. Did, man. And with this proving to management they'd made the right decision, they could To my opinion, to me, this version of Hulk Hogan was my favorite version of Hulk Hogan. I know the iconic little uh what you oh each of each share your praise vitamin Hogan was the iconic, but to me, I love this Hogan right here. This was like near dear to my heart though, because he was still like he was the Hulk red and red, but he was like a little bit of the cool and WO though persona, but as a baby face though as well too. Continue to ride the nostalgia train with this even seeing Hogan become the undisputed world champion mm -hmm. when he beat Triple H for the title the next month at Backlash. Of course, he'd lose this back to The Undertaker soon Undertaker. thereafter as even Hulkamania had its limits by this point in time. But it didn't stop Hogan from continuing to fill up a prominent role on the card for the next mm -hmm. while yet as he helped to get younger stars yes, such indeed. as Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar over to the next level. But what of the ying to Terry Bollea's yang, Macho Man Randy Savage? Ooh. After all, while he may have been persona non grata in WWE by the time the new millennium rolled around, it should never be forgotten that years before this, in 1991, he'd had an all-time great babyface turn of his own when he reunited with the love mm -hmm. of his life, Miss Elizabeth, at WrestleMania 7. That's right, it's often been called one of the most emotional moments in wrestling mm -hmm. history, and that's for good reason. Because if you go back and watch it yep. now, you can actually see grown women in the yep. audience crying. Why were they so emotional? Well, in the years leading up to the turn, Savage had spent most of his time playing a dastardly heel, one who acted more abusive towards his wife and valet than anything else. Hell, after losing the WWF title to Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 5, he'd even abandon Elizabeth and start shacking up with Sensational mm -hmm. Sherry instead. But despite it seeming like the love story for the ages was well and truly dead yeah, by then, our people both Lanny and Macho and Lanny right there, man. Hope still remain, as at WrestleMania 7, when the Macho Man put his career on the line during a match with the Ultimate Warrior, his real life lover was there in the crowd watching on. And as if this wasn't enough to prove that she still cared for him, the fact that she ran in to save him at the end certainly was. Yes, after losing to the warrior, Randy was attacked by Sherry, with this causing Elizabeth mm -hmm. to jump over the barricade and rescue her man. So that was why, mm -hmm. right there in the middle of the ring, he apologized to Elizabeth, then raised her up on his shoulder as the two rekindled their love and gave the whole thing mm -hmm. the fairy tale ending it deserved. That said, not every face turn during this period was a fairy tale. No, some were far closer to being a horror story instead. Mm. And we can say this with confidence because just one year later, despite being Wait, WWE's resident one. horror movie villain, The Undertaker one. decided it was time to shake things up by becoming a this hero. This was a good one. Not that he changed much about his character here, though. No, he was still the undead zombie mm -hmm. mortician, an unstoppable force who apparently felt no pain. 
But with fans falling in love with this gimmick despite its clear heel leanings, Vince McMahon decided to go with it and see how long it would work out for. And it and did. It's just as well he did because, as it turned out, The Undertaker would go on for a long, long time. Uh, yes. And had it not been for this original refresh, the gimmick may never have made it out of the early That's 90s true. at all. Basically, it all started when after noticing how many cheers the dead man was getting during his feuds against the likes of Hulk Hogan, the company tried to combat this by aligning him with Uber heel Jake mm -hmm. the Snake Roberts. But when even that didn't work, it was clear what had to be done. Yep. So when Roberts attempted to lay out Miss Elizabeth with a steel chair in February of 1992, the dead man stopped him, as even for him, this was a move too far. Mm -hmm. Not being happy with that decision, however, Roberts confronted his partner a couple of weeks later and demanded to know whose side he was on, only for him to find out the answer he feared the most when The Undertaker replied, not yours. Mm -hmm. Yes, it may have seemed strange to some to have the big new baby face of the company be a gothic monster yep. who liked to place his opponents in caskets and body bags, but the early 90s audience was all in on the idea. Mm -hmm. And so, after he dispatched of Jake at WrestleMania 8, the Phenom started a lengthy run as a baby face. Mm -hmm. And during this time, not only would he become WWF champion, but he'd also have very memorable feuds against yes. the likes of Mankind, Yokozuna, and Kane. Mm -hmm. Hell, at one point, he'd even fight himself at mm -hmm. SummerSlam 1994, though, if we're being honest, that one's probably best left forgotten. <laughs> then, once he was fully established as a top guy, he'd continue to wrestle in high-profile matches all the way up until 2020 with this making him probably the longest tenured in-ring performer Indeed. in the company's history. Of course, not all WWE superstars can have such a lengthy run on top, though. That just wouldn't be feasible. But even if our next entry really never caught on it the same way as the dead man over the long term, oh, yeah, it Vincent's doesn't change the fact that when he finally Virgil. broke away from Ted DiBiase in 1991, Virgil was briefly a huge star. Mm -hmm. But how did this happen? Well. After spending years playing DiBiase's long-suffering sidekick, Virgil decided that he'd finally had enough of the abuse when mm -hmm. at that year's Royal Rumble, he laid him out with his own mm -hmm. million-dollar title and started forging a path of his own. That said, before he could truly leave the past behind, he'd first have to beat the million-dollar man one-on-one, -on -one. and he'd get his chance to do just this at WrestleMania 7 a few months later, when, with Rowdy Roddy Piper acting as his friend and motivator, he'd score a count-out victory over his former boss. Was it as strong as a pinfall mm -hmm. would have been? No, but it did at least mean Virgil was now the million dollar champion. And using the momentum of this then, combined with the huge reaction he'd gotten on that night he first turned face, he spent the next few months defending the belt against all comers. Mm. After that though, his brief time in the spotlight would come to an end as he lost the belt back to DiBiase, and from there began to slip back down the card, mm. with him eventually exiting WWF altogether and going over to WCW to become a member of the NWO. Still, even if he didn't last in the main event scene, it doesn't take anything away from the fact that his initial turn worked out so well it because it had been quietly building for years at that point, mostly taking place in the background and allowing fans a chance to truly get invested. But can it compare to another great mid-card babyface turn which took place decades later and saw a different put-upon employee drop his boss to a huge fan ovation? Oh. Well, that's up for you to decide. And since we've already yep. made the case for Virgil, we really should make the case for Damian Mizdow Damn, too. Jump ball After him, all, man. no one would have expected Damian Sandow to get over again given how badly he'd been buried following yep. his failure to successfully cash in the Money in the Bank contract in late 2013. And that was because, no longer being treated like a serious threat at that point, mm -hmm. he'd pretty much play the role of comedy undercard act, mm -hmm. whose only TV time came when he was impersonating other, more high-profile figures like Vince McMahon oh, or, yeah. or Shawn Michaels. Luckily, though, things began to turn around in mid-2014, as here, Sandow was rebranded as Damian Mizdow, mm -hmm. the personal stunt double to The Miz. Yes, despite the role being nothing on paper, the Massachusetts native managed to get it over big mm -hmm. time by fully playing up to its ridiculous nature. And this included mimicking every movement his client made, including taking phantom punches at ringside whenever The mm -hmm. Miz got cracked across the face inside the squared circle. So with things soon getting to a point where audiences were chanting for Miz Dow every mm -hmm. week, The Miz began to grow frustrated over the fact that he was yeah. being overshadowed. And that led to conflict building between mm -hmm. the two, which saw the so-called Hollywood A-lister start acting more and more dismissive towards his employee. 
Hell, things eventually got so bad that Ms. Dow would be relegated from stunt double to mere personal assistant. Not willing to be disrespected like that, however, the fan favorite formulated a plan to get even, a plan which he eventually executed at the WrestleMania 31 pre-show. Yep. What happened here? Well, towards the end of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal that night, Ms. Dow turned on his boss when he eliminated him, yep. all to a massive pop. That said, while this was a great moment, it ultimately fell short in the follow-up mm -hmm, because as the weeks went on, Sandow ended up slipping back down the card and returned to the role of comedy act, now alongside Curtis mm -hmm. Axel. But falling down the card was never going to be an option for our next subject, though. And that's because when it oh, comes yep. to Brock Most Lesnar, recent one. whether it be as a heel or a babyface, he's always on top. Mm -hmm. Of course, most of his time in WWE since his return in 2012 has seen him be on the villainous side of the alignment yep. chart. With the main reason for this being he's so good at playing a dominating bully, it's easy fodder for babyfaces. To the point faces. of holding the title hostage, with right now the current title Queef is doing right now, who ironically was call, calling out Brock for that time during the time as a face, which he could, which was, was reasonable, but he's not doing the same damn thing. To go up against. Over time, however, it became apparent his formula of taking a smaller act like Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, or Finn Balor to Suplex City was starting to grow a little stale, as was his seemingly mm -hmm. never ending series of matches against Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. So realizing things needed to be freshened up then, he started changing his gimmick in January of 2022 when Paul Heyman betrayed him by mm -hmm. fully throwing his chips in with the Tribal Chief. Yeah. And Ooh. this change meant not only formally turning babyface, but also dropping some of the more stern aspects. And this was like, this was low-key a double turn, a low-key a double turn, if, 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 to be honest, but, but to be honest. Though. ...of his character as he instead allowed himself to have a bit more fun. Mm -hmm. How would he do this? Well, by taking a much more cowboy-like tone to the way he did things, including coming out to the ring in Dusty Levi's, a plaid mm -hmm. shirt, and a 10-gallon hat. And it's just as well he chose to go this path then because mm -hmm. immediately afterwards, he was refreshed once more. Enough to where, when he faced off against Roman mm -hmm. Reigns again at that year's SummerSlam, it didn't feel like a retread, but instead came across as arguably the best showing the two ever had together. Yes, part of the reason for yep. this was because of an absolutely insane spot when the ring was tipped over with a digger mm -hmm. truck, but had Brock not turned babyface by that point and allowed himself to be embraced by the audience once more, it's likely he would have never come up with such a crowd-pleasing idea in the first place. Yep. And with his cowboy gimmick still having plenty of juice left in it, it means we likely haven't seen the end of the cartoon chaos he can bring well. to the ring. That Unfortunately, this was made for, I'm, I'm guessing this was made for what happened on the couple weeks of Raw. Because he didn't drop, he didn't not, he's not that ca cartoon comic anymore, but still. Said, one person we sadly won't be seeing any more of is a man who, despite dying at the young age of 46, was able to build such a grand legacy for himself, he's still considered one Indeed. of the all-time goats to this day, and that's Andre the Giant. Mm -hmm. As for his great face turn, though, well, it wouldn't come until late in his career when he was already effectively retired. But then there was little opportunity for him to turn before this anyway, as between the mid 60s and the late mm -hmm. 80s, he largely played the role of fan favorite everywhere he mm -hmm. went. Of course, this would change during the lead up to WrestleMania 3 when Andre turned heel on Hulk Hogan and from there demanded a shot at the WWF title. Mm -hmm. And while he wouldn't win his match when it came, his new shift in character would remain, as over the next three years, he continued to be on the side of the villains. Mm -hmm. That's right, whether it was working with the million dollar man Ted DiBiase to screw the Hulkster out of the world title in 1988, or feuding with Jake the Snake Roberts in 1989, there was no talking sense into the giant, as by now, he'd fully turned his back on the fans. But when in 1990 he realized his time in the ring was finally coming to an end, he apparently had a change of heart, because at that April's mm -hmm. WrestleMania 6, after he and Haku lost the tag team titles to Demolition, something shifted in his mind. Sure, this shift was helped along by the fact that Bobby Heenan had yep, slapped him across him the face after the bell yep. rang, but it wasn't just that, because seeing how much the fans were still behind him even in defeat, Andre realized that he should have been fighting for them all along. So that was why he proceeded to do just this as he sent both the Brain and Haku packing. And his decision here couldn't have come at a better time as it happened, because unbeknownst to him or anyone else, he didn't have many years left. Mm. In fact, just three years later, Andre would tragically die of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. 
And even after his untimely death, Andre's face turn will continue to be talked about for decades as one of the all-time greats, much like each of the others we've looked at today. Yeah, good little video right here on the good guys as well too, man. And he got some good picks for for some great picks for face turns as well too, though. It could be some other ones definitely more that could be added on there too, such as The Rock's face turn. Tur, um, John Cena when he turned face, and good amount of others though too. But these these picks was definitely some great picks though for sure. Other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and who is currently here right now that you would love to see? Oh yeah, I've got to add Seth Rollins face turn as well too. It was pretty 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 awesome though. But who is that's currently here right now that you would love to see as a to have a face turn as well too? Right now, I would like to see. I know she's doing this undefeated thing with the uh, TBS channel or anything, but hopefully down the line, I'd like to see a face turn, a face run from Jay Cargo. Um, I got, I got, I, I look like I got one from Tasha Steels right now going on in Impact. Though I haven't been followed up with Impact, she's turned face recently. Um, Carmella Hayes, I think he's turning face. He's face right now. He's he did turn face, or he's on the verge of it. He's a twin right now, but he bet he's going to turn face as well too. Um. Who else is currently Hill that I would like to see turn her face? Um, I definitely uh I like to see Powerhouse Hobby a face one point one two. Um, but I and this one right here, it knows probably gonna be God knows whenever this is ever gonna happen. Probably gonna take years because he's so in love with this Hill run so for so much that he say he never will ever turn back. But as I'm saying, say, never say never. If the Tribal Chief ever turned back face. Then and only then I will acknowledge him. But other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T Bear signing off. One love.